Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll get started here in just a little bit. Thanks. Good morning. Morning. <clears throat> Just a couple more minutes. Um, All right. <clears throat> Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Andy Shirtliff. Uh, welcome to the Downtown TIF Advisory Board meeting for Thursday, January 13th of 2022. Um, uh, Ellie um, 
or April, do we? I want to make sure, do we have a quorum for today for some of the items we're voting on? It's a very good question. So yeah. we have you, Andy, okay. Charlie, Nathan, Chris, me. What else do we have? Brian and Jennifer. Okay. Seven out of, I believe, April, we have 13 members presently. Um, well, we don't have 13 members presently. We have one. Oh, no, I know we, I mean, um, yes, sure there, there, there should be 13, yes. So we have a quorum established. Awesome. We have seven members out of 13. Okay. That's great. All right. Well, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I know we've got some guests here and we've got Helena Civic TV. Welcome. And for those watching at home, thanks. Um, introductions. I'm Andy Shirtliff. I'm the chair of the uh, downtown TIF advisory board for the city of Helena. I represent Lewis and Clark County. And we can go around the horn and we, the board members, feel free to introduce yourselves and Hi. guests as well. Thanks. Charlie Carson, uh, BMB Market, Rodney Street. Chris Holmes with the Myrna Loy. Brian Obert, the Executive Director at MBAC. Uh, Nathan Bill, you an attorney at Jackson, Murdo and Grant. Seth Please Brandenberger, Schubert. Union Market Building. Uh, Please Schubert. Uh, on a BID and Placer Commercial. Jennifer D. Herrera with Project Management and the Great Northern Town Center. Mickey Zerker, Executive Director, BID. I think that was everybody that served right. on the board. So okay. I will introduce okay. myself. I'm Ellie Ray. I'm a planner with the City Community Development Department. Uh, Good morning. My name is Sharon Hogan. I, for now, I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Helena. Thank you all for coming. Glad to have you, Sharon. And I'm April Sparks. I am the Administrative Assistant for the Community Development Department. Welcome. Okay, um, let's uh, let's dig in. Uh, let's update on the budget and revenues, if you please. Uh, let's take a look at our numbers for um, as of December thirty first, twenty twenty one. Ellie, feel free to take it away, or Sharon. Yeah, sure thing, Andy. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. So mm -hmm. this is the worksheet that we got recently from Sheila Danielson, the finance director for the city. Um, as you can see, the most important thing here is that the cash available after all the project commitments, including the two parking lot projects on Rodney Street that um, were approved by the city commission on December 20th. Um, less those commitments, we have $96,473 available presently. Um, I would like to note just for purposes of discussions as we move forward in this meeting today, that that is the fast and hard figure as of right now. Um, the applications before you today, all three of them combined well exceed the available amount um, the amount that is being requested today in total is $191,820. So as you review them, please do keep that in mind. Um, and um, I had a, a moment to speak with Sheila this morning um, ahead of the meeting, and she did alert me to the fact that um, she's actually downgraded the amount that she's anticipating for the full tax year for this district um, from, I think it was about $183,000 down to a little over 162. So um, bearing that in mind, knowing that you know some money, it sounds like it's still trickling in from the November tax bills um, and knowing that um, obviously the pandemic has hit people hard and otherwise, and I think probably even in normal times, you can anticipate certain people aren't able to pay taxes in full or at all. Um, so on the basis of that, um, she didn't want to, or wasn't able to at the time really gauge adequately how much might come in in the month of May 
or from May onward, I would say, ordinarily, I would um, you could commit funds that haven't yet come in because it uh, the May obviously is prior to the end of our fiscal year for the city, um, and it was, was all in the budget. The issue, though, is that as a point of best practice, she would not recommend that you commit funds where we don't know exactly how much is going to come in. Um, so I share this with you so that you can appropriately gauge these applications before you today. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you, Ellie. That's, that's good advice. Okay. Okay. Any more on the budget? Uh, no, that's really all unless you have any questions of us. Does the board we... have it? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say that we can try to answer to the best sure. of our abilities. Okay. Uh, do the board any of the board members have any questions about the, the budget or the numbers that you see before us? Feel free to jump in. This is Jenny. I do not. I think the only other thing to really quickly say, Andy, um, for everybody's edification is that um, I know that we're going to have our little subcommittee meeting to talk about the merits of having a match requirement or capping the amount of um, loan or funds that can be um, granted out into the community. Um, that will be next week. So I, you know, obviously that we don't have that recommendation to put forward to the full board today, but for the next meeting we will. Um, but depending on how conversations go today, it might just naturally occur now. Yeah. So we'll see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, that might give us some options too. Um, uh, might give us some pause there because like Ellie said, we are going to be, there's a quick subcommittee next week that's going to discuss waivers, going to discuss the match and going to discuss the cap on some of these funds and um, though that won't affect the discussion today uh, could affect the next meeting and the next applications come June or July and so we'll have to keep that in mind for today's discussion as well um, and on to speaking of discussion point d discussion topics we've got three applicants we've got the cruise avenue triangle park application we have the union market water stormwater and sidewalk infrastructure application and we have the penwell building americans with disability act accessibility improvements application um well we'll go in order on the agenda let's go with the cruise avenue triangle park application um yeah if we all thank you uh april ellie and sharon for the awesome packet of information um we'll walk through these we've got the project name or address is at the it's going to be at 317 cruise um i am going to butcher that word um the uh <laughs> this is, yeah the garden and ada access uh in that triangle portion um If it is uh, page two, Matt Oon of uh, 528 North Last Chance Gulch um, uh, is looking at building a, a green space there on Cruise Avenue in front of the new or the redeveloped independent building. Um, and part of the property is owned or the property is owned by the city of Helena. And so uh, it has an encroachment, per they're requesting an encroachment permit on the property for access to the building. It's a landscape revitalization project. Um, Ellie or anybody would like to walk us through that um, or how would you like to do this? Um, I think it might be wise actually to invite the applicant. I yeah, know that okay. there's some staff from Mosaic Architecture on this call. So awesome. um, I don't know if Matt's available or okay. Ben, whoever yeah. might like to plug in. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have Mosaic jump in. Thank you. Sounds good. Um, I think Jeff is on here as well. Um, Matt yeah. is uh, tied up in another meeting, but uh, we're um, part of the group that's developing the independent building. Okay. Um, and of course, this triangle piece has been integral to the design and the development of the rest of that area as well, um, the future plans for it. Uh, the triangle is owned by the city. We have um, received an encroachment permit for just access on our south side of the independent building. Um, but we do want to make this a, a pretty nice corner. Um, we do 
we have a landscape plan right now and we have access um, including ADA and some steps and some other um, uh, retaining walls that happen in there um, quite a bit of landscaping that that's going to happen if we can afford it uh, so with our agreement um, with the city right now is that that we have the encroachment permit we're going to take care of this um, corner um, get it landscaped and we'll we'll maintain it as well over time so I, I think it's a win for the city for sure um, to, to have this corner um, developed and the rest of the site developed as well, which will include a uh, housing project um, down the road here a bit and another potential uh, uh, additional commercial building. Um, and I think the city, this is kind of fitting in with the entire kind of cruise redevelopment plan. And this is, a, again, a triangle that the city owns that hasn't been maintained. Um, and this partnership has agreed to do the maintenance on it if the if the city will help out with the landscaping part. We've already invested all the money into the hardscape portion of it, which has been significant. Uh, this is Jeff, by the way. <laughs> um, so we're asking for the TIP funding to do the landscape improvements and, and turn it into a true park space. And it will, it will include a lot of public amenities. Everybody's welcome there. It has um, uh, benching, seating, um, landscaping, so you can kind of see the plan there that Ellie's pulled up in terms of uh, kind of the zero escape sort of idea, native landscapings, um, trees, kind of real, make it a real show piece as you come down Sixth Avenue towards uh, downtown. Hey, Ben and Jeff. Um, so maybe to add some more context. So when is our little building going to get knocked down? And do you have a guess on when you're going to put the apartments that would just be uphill from this spot? Um, so th the little building may already have come down. I know it was <laughs> scheduled to be, and I just haven't driven by there here recently, but it, it, it's scheduled to come down here pretty soon if, if it hasn't already. Um, the apartment building we're working on right now, we, we're working on the, uh, uh, the design and that'll, turn into construction drawings. Um, it, we don't have a set schedule yet, but just if, if we keep moving the way we are, uh, you know, it might be something that starts next fall. Okay. Banner, Jeff, um, uh, speaking of those apartments, can you remind me, I, I can't remember from conversations with Matt, are you, is your intention right now to make those more market rate? Not, yeah. not really affordable, but market rate units? Yeah. Right. You're, um, Jeff, yeah. you're giving some bad. <laughs> um, yeah, they're market rate units, but um, for two of the floors, the idea is that we do um, very small units and make them much more affordable, which is kind of the tact um, that you're seeing kind of throughout the country is uh, there aren't, you know, there wasn't the effort, uh, ability to get you know, subsidies for the apartments. So to make them kind of more affordable, um, the lower two levels are actually quite small units in the you know, four to 600 square foot range. Again, trying to hit a market that isn't just kind of high end condos downtown that, you know, kind of working young professionals or retired folks can uh, live downtown without having a you know a million dollar apartment so they aren't they aren't um set aside as affordable but they are designed to be uh fit within to a, a lower end of the market on the lower two levels the upper levels are a little bit bigger but we we haven't quite determined what the size of those is yet this is charlie carson how, how many units in the apartments that's a great question charlie i think there's about um, I'll say there's about 12 per level. So depending upon how the upper floor turns out, it could be about uh, around 30 or 32. Yeah, I think right now we're looking at some condos on the upper floor that, that might, there could be four condos on that floor or, or eight condos. It kind of depends on the mix we have. The other floors um, have 
what was it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 units per 12 hour. Per, yeah. yeah. So okay. the other part of that project, there's, there's two parts to it. There is the apartment project, which again is trying to bring housing downtown. And then there is still some remaining site directly uh, east of yeah. this park space that we're hoping to find a uh, commercial tenant for to be able to do uh, an associated structure there. But that, that, that may be uh, down the road. But we certainly hope to kind of do a complete redevelopment of this, of this block. Um, and this park is kind of one of those elements that is kind of an anchor piece and a public space that will tie all these buildings together. Right. Um, again, so, so going back to this, the, to the park here. Hmm. Um, so looking at the, at the screen here, we, we have a pervious walkway and is that the ADA handicap ramp down to the, to the doors there? Yes. Yes, it is. And <laughs> Um, who's going to maintain this for the, the uh, snow and winter? So that's our kind of our agreement with the city is that if, that we, if we're allowed to kind of uh, get the access easement and some support in kind of getting this done, that the, the cruise partnership that owns the building will maintain the park. Um, Again, it's going to be kind of right out our front door, so it's kind of to our advantage to maintain it as well. But uh, I know the city struggles with maintaining parks, so and this would be a different situation. So we would end up we would end up doing the maintenance on the landscaping, the shoveling, and the uh, hardscape. Okay, um, I think it looks great. Um, I think it's a, it'll look really good as you come up. Uh, Sixth Avenue there, and, and and improve. You know, once the demolition of that little building goes too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's just the way it is. But um, I think that looks really good. And uh, um, I was talking to Andy about it last night, and I I thought you guys owned it. I didn't know it was a city-owned property. So. Yeah. Uh, this is Sharon. Um, Sharon, um, Jeff, or Ben, what is the um status of the easement the easement i think we city. you mean the encroachment yeah and the encroachment oh there you go okay yeah we we so, have that in place okay yeah and I, I was just looking at to see if that outlined who does maintenance in there and it does say um that they will it will be maintained when you look through that. And, and it just, yeah, just as a general note, I wanna caution all the board members in case we've never talked about this, all these actions are quasi judicial. So any conversations you have about them, you should be having during this meeting and not offline, just FYI. Thank you, Sharon. So, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> so, for Ben and Jeff, just so you understand, we're very interested in how we connect the walking mall to, to Rodney up here, which is kind of why I wanted to bring up the, the idea of the, the apartments, how this fits in. We think that connection between crews going up to Rodney and crews back down to the walking mall is very important. And this seems to kind of set a tone for that. I think we agree, and I think we agree that Cruz is another, I think that connection to Rodney and the development of Cruz are two really, are you know, kind of the future of downtown in a lot of ways, so we're kind of happy to be kind of part of it. Any, anything else that Jeff or Ben would like to add or any more questions from the board on this application? Um, this is Chris at the Myrna Loy. We're yeah. um, kind of following on what, what Brian said. We're also looking at planning out and installing some small wayfinding signage that connects downtown with the Rodney Street area. 
We haven't at all looked at where those signs might be placed, but it seems like maybe in that garden area nearest the corner might be a good place. So I just wanted to ask about willingness to collaborate in that way um, or talk to us about the American First and foremost, so we hope that you. Yeah, that would be, that would be great to have um, kind of work together and come up with maybe at, maybe at either corner, um, you know, of the, of the overall project, you know, could be, we also think in the apartment building runs all another complete block to the east. So, you know, potentially with that corner and this uh, sixth and cruise corner. Cool. Thank you. Um, I think uh, just um, as a point of cost on this, I know Matt put together some costs uh, for that corner. I think he lowballed it, <laughs> but our request it was for the uh, thirty-three thousand. I think uh, we're going to spend well above that on this corner, just um, just in the landscaping alone. So. Uh, Related to that, um, April, could you turn to the project cost worksheet from the application form really quickly for everybody's edification? I'm sure they have it in front of them, but thank you. Um, ben, do you have a sense, given cost overruns that you guys have been experiencing, what, what it may actually take now to achieve this so that the, they have a sense, better sense of, I guess, the match? Well, it's gonna we haven't. We have an estimate for all the hardscape and, and uh, asphalt and kind of uh, the concrete of this that Helena Sand is working on right now. And it's, it's the whole thing. We don't have a breakdown of the pieces and parts, but the whole thing is, is 270 some thousand, um, which includes a lot of this work that doesn't include the landscape. It's just all the, the hardscape work. Um, so, uh, like I said, I, I know, given the, the concrete work we have in this triangle and um, the, the trail coming up through there, uh, we're going to be well in excess of, of this estimate here. Yeah, and as we understand the process, obviously you don't pay for things that are in place. So, you know, we had to move forward with the hardscape uh, development and construction so that's ongoing what we're asking for is just simply the landscape piece um, that goes in after the fact so again this is you know, kind of a pretty small percentage of the overall cost of the park space but uh, an important part so thank you for clarifying that because uh, just doing a quick calculation that means that 33,000 even if it is just 270 um, for that hardscaping I mean this is probably going to be less than 10 percent of the overall cost of Right. No, I need to redo that map, but it's low, basically. Is what well, I the, yeah, the 270 included stuff that was kind of on the edge and outside the bounds of the city park area. So, right. you know, maybe 100 of that was within the park. So, um, again, we didn't have, that's what Ben's saying, we didn't have the breakdown for what was on this triangle versus um, off the triangle. Uh, although a significant portion certainly was when dealing with the triangle space. Um, Mickey Zerker, uh, you have a question? I do, yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, I'm just curious if anybody, when you guys are talking about wayfinding, um, if the conversations have ever been um, around the current wayfinding that's that the BID, and I think like parking, when there was a parking advisory committee, um, put up the wayfinding signs that are currently down there. I'm just curious if you could, when you guys are having those conversations, if you're thinking you wanted to keep in line with that same theme, or if you were thinking you were going to go outside of that current theme that is downtown. Um, Mickey, this is Chris. We are just starting on the wayfinding Mickey, project and we'd be happy to talk to you about it as we go along. Great. Thank you.
any other questions uh, for Ben or Jeff or on the numbers? Uh, any thoughts? Guess not. So, um, uh -oh. I got a note from LRA asking about if we're experiencing a bad connection. Can you hear me okay? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you can. Okay. Um, looks like, oh, Ellie, you're back. Looks like. Um, I can hear you now, yes. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Um, so we're still on, you didn't miss much. We were just, we were just uh, pausing for a moment. Um, now, I, I was going through the pro project cost worksheet and the architectural design, is that being done by, that's being done by yourselves, correct? Okay, and that's for, that's okay. Now, Ben, you mentioned low ball, is that for the hardscaping or the zero scaping or was that for the architectural design? when you when you said that well i i think uh what matt did is he just put a lump sum in there for um the landscape cost and uh twenty five thousand doesn't go very far <laughs> in, in landscaping so i've um, done some i've done some gardening and landscaping recently <laughs> yeah i, I hear you so <laughs> <laughs> so i i think that's where the low ball <laughs> sure. comes sure. into it okay But we're committed to, you know, we're doing the project and the design. We're just, mm -hmm. the rest of it will just fall on the project cost. Yeah. And also, too, with regards to the housing that you had mentioned, I, I got to take a tour of the independent building thanks to Jason O'Neill from Sidecar and got to meet some of the Mosaic team. And um, somebody had pointed out the spot where everyone was going to go um, or the housing was going to go. When it, when was that going to be started? I must have missed that. Uh, wanted to just, just for my curiosity well it it started already in terms of the uh planning part of it we're okay. working on schematic design and in okay. that right now um if all comes together and the investors that are going to invest in this come together uh then it's probably a fall start type project for the, the housing project great and ben, okay. ben that is fall of this year or 2023 uh, it would be fall of this year. Oh, perfect. perfect. That's good. I think there's, That's you know, there's some, definitely some good momentum mm -hmm. that that has been caused by the Sealy building and and um, the sale prices that that happened there. I think that helped to sort of um, set a precedent in Helena that that you actually can sell condos now or in, in rent apartments because we've done enough of these as feasibility studies and nobody ever pulled the trigger on them because it was one of those things. We just didn't have that kind of real estate market here and, and it was a big risk to do. Um, so, you know, hats off to the guys at the uh, Sealy building because they, they did take a risk and, and it's paying off. Um, and I think that'll help open the door for a lot of other projects like ours to happen. Agreed. Agreed. That's great. That's good news. Um, yeah, we were happy to help out a little bit with some of the outside infrastructure um, of the Sealy building. And uh, yeah, are there, so back to the board or back to this application, um, any questions beyond just the project costs and financing? Are there any other questions that the board members might have? Andy, this is Lee Schubert. I don't have a question, Bradley. but a, okay. a suggestion, procedural suggestion here. We're, we need to triage these three proposals. So why don't we look at all three first before we make any decisions on any one of them? I agree with that. I was thinking the same thing, Lee. That sounds good to me. Let's just, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move our way through this with uh, Mr. Schubert's recommendation to just, we'll, we'll, uh, marinate on this for a little bit we'll move on to the next one unless anybody has any questions or comments um we'll move on to the second one um thank you ben and jeff for your application and your interest in your investment helena um we'll move on to the union market water stormwater and sidewalk infrastructure application um we will have uh, is seth with us today yes seth right. brandenberger 
Seth, the applicant, thank you very much, sir. Feel free to um, uh, kick it off, if you will. Feel free that you have the floor. Sure. Um, my wife and I own the Union Market building, the Union Market block. And uh, what we're applying for, we have a life safety issue on the west side of the building. We've got a sidewalk um, that the city has identified as a hazard. We've got an underground vault under the sidewalk. Um, we have a lead water line that has no shutoff and where it enters the building, there's no backflow. And that's a risk for the city uh, water system um, in that in the event of a depressurization, uh, the, the union market water will backflow into the city main line. Um, I've had uh, the city plumbing inspector down to have a look at this and we, we've discussed it. They're aware of the situation. It's also undersized. It's a three quarter inch uh, water line that serves two restaurants uh, and a hair salon in addition to the rest of the building. And uh, my uh, wife and I have spent a tremendous amount on the fixing the building up in, since we've owned it. Um, we started in 2006 with another couple and we've owned it outright since uh, 2012. Um, this, it tur as it turns out, just about every utility that you can imagine goes down Jackson Street. Um, Jackson Street serves uh, buildings on the west side and on the east side. And we, uh, we found out just how difficult it is to work under that street um, when there was a fire hydrant replacement two years ago. Um, you know, there's, there's the asphalt, then there's a brick street underneath that. And then you run into utility boxes and uh, multiple utilities. Um, the other part of the project is um, the roof drains. There is a single roof drain that drains the entire roof into the sanitary sewer. Um, and that is, uh, that's really not an appropriate way to drain a uh, storm water is into a sanitary sewer. And so the, you know, the city is treating that water as uh, sewage. And of course it's, it's rainwater. So we would like to correct that. Um, there is another issue that's not on this proposal and that is the sewer. I had the sewer camera last week and where the uh, city replaced the, the main line uh, for the, the sewer, um, the contractor had reduced the, uh, at, at the connection, the contractor had reduced the diameter of the pipe from eight inches to uh, about three and a half inches, which is a violation of, of code. And that's something that I would hope we can address also uh, if the project is funded. Um, there is an ADA issue. There's also the fact that we received deliveries for the Pita Pit restaurant on that side of the building. And uh, it seems like every time I go down there, there's a truck parked on top of the vault and I'm afraid that uh, somebody's gonna crash through um, the sidewalk in that location. So that's kind of our, that's kind of what we're trying to resolve with this project. Um, lead water lines are are not are although they're very durable they're not a good thing to have um there's always a question of whether how much contamination is coming off the lead into the into the water and going to our our restaurants um oh and there's also the issue that there's no uh the curb stop is twisted off. And it, in the event that anything happens to that line, there's gonna be uncontrolled flow until the street is 
excavated, which is a worry because uh, normally the way these things happen is about January when the street gets completely frozen, just something will fail. And uh, so that, that would be an issue also. So anyway, that, that's what we're looking for, for help with. Are there any, anybody has any questions? I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you, Seth. Any board members have any questions for uh, Seth on this project for the um, Union Mark properties? Feel free to jump in. Brian? Yes, Seth. Um, how long has the curb stop been twisted off? That's typically the, the city's, um, I mean, uh, infrastructure at that point. How long has it not been actually operating? Well, you know, when we purchased the building in 2006, I dug down there and that's when I determined that it was twisted off. So we don't know. It's been in bad shape for quite some time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Seth, Charlie Carson. Um, how was it uh, determined that it was a lead pipe for the water service to the, to the property? Um, the, the lead pipe is visible inside the building under under the building and uh so we know it goes at least to the curb stop i did talk to the city and and the city said well we can pretty much assume that it goes all the way out to the to the main i don't know for a fact that that's true but i'm i'm that's that's the city's opinion um it's a three-quarter inch line um which is undersized for the for the building and you know if we were to just put a uh, a backflow on the piping we have i i don't think we'd get enough pressure with a line that that small I had a quick question it might be for sharon sharon i don't know if you'd know the answer to this but has the city of helena put together a plan yet to apply for some of the lead pipe replacement funds that are coming to the state with the uh, infrastructure bill? Nathan, I, I don't know the direct, uh, we can find that out, but I don't know the answer to that question. I think it is my understanding that some of our focus will be on uh, replacing the 10 mile line, which, um, is our major water source, and that is quite a major project. And there may be some other stuff, that's certainly information that um, we could have public works at some point come and talk to you just about their plans, because that may relate to other projects that you're gonna be doing in this down, down area. Okay. So maybe that's something you can put on a future uh, agenda. But I, to my knowledge, not specifically in this area, but there may be a general project. So um, we can yeah. get that answer for you and send an email out to all the board members. Great. Yeah, I was, I was just, I was on the phone with the city of Plains yesterday and Anna Miller at the DNRC was sort of soliciting requests for ways to use the funds that they were about to get that were specially allocated to lead pipe um, replacement. So uh, they're trying to find ways to use that money. Um, anyway, that was just a thought that I had. I was just curious if, but yeah, thank you, Sharon, for having the public works for and sort of look into that. Yeah. Great question, Ethan. Thank you. <clears throat> but I guess as a quick side note, I actually, yeah, I mean, I, I do think this project, you know, this is a good product. One of the issues in particular that stands out to me again, I whether it's properly. TIF funding or whether it, there's city funds available, but that the storm drain going right into the sewer is certainly uh, every time we're treating rainwater as sewer, um, we're, <laughs> we're, yeah. uh, we're increasing yeah. the loss. Um, mm -hmm. So it does seem like that one way or another, there ought to be a mechanism by which we can manage that. That's just kind of, that's an, certainly an inefficiency there. Yeah, and I think I think the cost on that is not really. Uh, I think it's going to be significantly more than that, just based on where we can put that water. Um, 
I'd like to pipe it directly into the storm sewer. Um, there's going to be some design issues with that, and there's going to be some convincing down at the city. Sure. Um, just to dump it off onto the street is going to create problems that I don't think we're option. prepared yeah. for. But uh, I think, mm -hmm. you know, we want to we want to do the the best. We want the best solution, not okay. just a solution. We we want the best solution. Thank you. Yeah. You bet. All right. We do too. <laughs> we do as well. Absolutely. So is there any other thoughts or questions? I, I heard somebody want to chime yeah. in. Yes, yeah. sir. So Seth, the, the under the underground vault that's under the sidewalk, is that something that you use at this point or is that just access? Um, I, I'm kind of trying to better understand what the long-term intent will be than just under the sidewalk yep. right there. Yep. Uh, we we've either got to engineer a uh, you know a sidewalk access for it, or we've got an engineer a retain a wall foundation wall under there and backfill it. Okay, just seems like that's in a city this old. We're going to be running into holes in the ground more often as we go, and here's another example of one. Yes, you know there's an old doorway just just as a side there used to be a vault going all the way down sixth which is has since been backfilled but okay. um this one this particular vault just is a uh it's like a six by six that uh you can access the the crawl space in the building the basement okay All right. Any uh, any other questions from the board regarding this application? Anything on? Andy, uh, uh, yes, sir. Go Andy, ahead, Lee. This is Lee Schubert. Uh, for full disclosure, I want to point out that Seth is a member of the BID, as am I. Whether that presents a conflict or not, I don't know. Um, but I just, I want to make that disclosure so that everybody Excellent. knows. Yeah. Um, yeah. A bit, uh, Seth and I have not discussed the application yeah. nor his project. Uh, I didn't realize it until I got the packet from April. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that connection. So Seth, you're a member of BID, not a board member. A, a trustee. A trustee. Okay. okay. Right. He is on the board. Um, Andy, this is Sharon. That, hey, Sharon. that that doesn't constitute a conflict of interest because yeah, I didn't think so not either. asking as a member of the BID and the BID is not asking sure. for this. So mm -hmm. that okay. relationship does not create a conflict okay. of interest, okay. but I appreciate Lee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. taking it into consideration yeah, thank you lee for being forthright with it and thank you seth uh um and also to you thanks lee for being on both uh appreciate it um yeah i don't see a conflict either i don't think it's a it's a big to do but thanks for being honest about it and uh um brian uh do, do, any thoughts that you have on this one any questions or uh I'm going to follow Lee on this. I, okay. I talked to Matt Ani briefly on the first one, and I've talked to Seth on his okay. application, the second one. Sure. Just they were talking to me. I mean, is this an applicable project? Kind yeah. of what it is. Um, and again, it's more of. To, I mean, if it if I feel that it's appropriate or that it could be, it's for them to then present it to the board, to this board. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's completely okay. And I think it's to be expected to, you know, as members of, uh, you know, citizens of Helena and also to our involvement in our community and uh, our businesses or our nonprofits and organizations that we're a part of, there's bound to be some, uh, some uh, 
cross contamination of sorts, but um, yeah, it's, I think it's to be expected that if someone like Seth or, or, or uh, Mr. Own asks one of us and says, Hey, what do you think? I think that's important as being board members to encourage people and help them walk through the process and say, you know, maybe yes, maybe no. Um, but as, you know, as board members, I think that's to be somewhat expected and uh, appreciate uh, all the applicants that we have and the interest they have in investing in Helena and especially downtown Helena. Um, so yeah, I appreciate that, Brian. I appreciate that Lee. And uh, yeah. And if you ever have any questions, uh, members, please feel free to reach out uh, Sharon, Ellie and April are great wealths of information. Feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, I don't have a problem with it uh, at the moment. Sure. So cool. Thank sure, you guys. Yeah, uh, Thanks everybody. Andy, could we just take a quick minute? Yes, that'd be because fun. these are quasi judicial things. Yep. And and we'll use the same models we use with the board of adjustment, subdivisions, and everything else. It is fine to direct people to where to find the information, mm -hmm. but beyond that, we uh, would recommend that you encourage them to either submit an application or an, an option would always be if they could come before the board, but I wouldn't recommend that separately from an application and discuss the merits at that open public meeting and not outside that. Um, that that's the same advice we give, like I said, board of adjustment, zoning commission, planning board, historic preservation board when they're doing demolition permits and the railroad TIF district. So I apologize if we hadn't, quite touch base about that here but oh, thank you sharon that's great thank you very much for the keep you legal mm -hmm. yeah keep our nose clean I, I don't, yep. that's all right thank you very much um with that uh thank you seth thank you uh very much for your application um with no more questions or thoughts on that we'll move on to the third application the uh penwell building ada accessibility improvements application Do we have? Uh... Yeah. All right. This is Matt Friedmeier with Dowling Architects. Matt, and this is Joe Muller, the owner of the Penwell. Great. Well, thank you both. Yeah, feel free to, you have the floor. Go ahead, Matt. All right. We are um, doing sort of a major project to the Penwell um, that encompasses interior and exterior work, uh, both relating to ADA um, and just general upkeep of the historic structure. Um, so the main, main point of the project is installing a um, limited use uh, elevator to the second floor. Um, and then along with that, um, updating restrooms to meet ADA um, since that elevator will pri provide access to the second floor and the basement. Um, and then from there, we're also looking at um, accessible entries to the building since it's on the, the slope of um, sixth, uh, providing platforms that provide um, accessible access into the front door of each unit. And, um, and then, yeah, that's the base of the project. <laughs> oh, uh, I think uh, the limited use, that's a name of this kind of an elevator. It's a smaller elevator so that you can go into an older building like this and get it fit in there. It has a 1500 pound capacity. And um, this project involves basically doing some surgery inside a structure built in 1906 and coming up out of the basement through the first floor up into the second floor with uh, what in the industry they call a hoistway and what all of us might call an elevator shaft. And um, 
Matt and uh, Staley Engineering, you know, have worked through some of the preliminary matters of, you know, does this fit? Where can it go? Um, where can, how can people access it? And, uh, you know, so we've got there and um, had the elevator people there. Um, basically you build that shaft and uh, the elevator people come in and essentially a week and uh, bolt their, their equipment and the cab and everything inside the shaft and, you know, hook everything all up and finish everything. And you, you put access in um, to a building. Um, the building was built in 1906 and I was coming home from the West Coast the other day and thinking about it in the airplane. Um, the Wright brothers first flight was in 1903. So obviously, you know, they weren't from where we've gone then to where we are now in an old building like this, they weren't thinking about the ADA issues that we're thinking about now. Very exciting to see um, the project that Mosaic and others are doing when they do these newer buildings and the consideration that comes in for ADA. Um, it's not just wheelchair um, bound folks that, that you should think about when you think about ADA. I think it can affect anybody at any different stage in their life. So, you know, a limited use, limited access elevator being a smaller package, um, a proven technology that is out there is applicable and usable to come in and, and put in to a building like this. Because uh, you're not drilling a, a piston shaft. That's usually the first thing you do when you build a building is drill a piston shaft to, to operate this elevator. So this is the technology that we need to use. And um, I find being in the commercial real estate business um, that the ADA uh, is just coming up everywhere, rightfully as it should. And not only for somebody's access and ability to move in a, build, a building, I think we'll find downtown and the, and the people that wanna to continue to do business down there. It's kind of a, it's a requirement to almost uh, built into their cultures that they have this kind of access, accessibility in their workspace and equality for all their workers. And it's even um, gone as far as, uh, depending on the kind of business, you see that they have to have it for the contracts that they sign with, I guess, various entities and, and potential clients and customers that they develop. They're demanding to see that um, you're progressive um, with ADA requirements. So if the elevator goes in, the, um, then you, you know you you want to make the leap to some bathrooms, and that you've got to have some access. And um, we have that that up on the second floor. Uh, there's a new bathroom. Um, there is a restaurant that exists on the main floor, and it was oh, I think put together four or five years ago. And, you know, they met their um, ADA requirements at that time in that space. And um, then as you drop down to the basement, there's an opportunity to reconfigure a bathroom down there and um, bring in the ADA access. Um, you know, thinking about the front of the street and <clears throat> I guess the ramps, that uh, Matt mentioned as you as you come to get into that elevator in the middle of the building, you've got to have the proper ramp and access and doorways um, to get in. Um, I've electrified uh, some of those openings, so that's all a part of this type of project. And uh, there's another ramp um, to the west for the space that's in there. Um, they, they'll need the same thing. You, you, you've got a lip when you're on Sixth Avenue, um, which I was studying in Seattle and it's amazing how steep their streets are. I don't know how those guys get in and out of those old buildings, but, um, when your street is sloping going by you, you've got to do something to get it straightened out. So, you know, you can meet the accessibility requirements 
Um, again, this building was updated in the 70s. There's a major, um, you know, I wouldn't take something like this on and there's not that many older buildings that haven't had some level of work on them, but this has a sprinkling system in it. Um, um, you know, great power supplies um, uh, at the back of the building. That's a monitored sprinkling system that's tied right in um, with the city um, of Helena um, monitored, you know, 24, 365. And um, so it, it got a lot of help in that timeline of, of buildings life in the 70s. If any of you remember the Waters Construction Company, they did the work. And, um, you know, we've got modern electrical and conduit. Um, you know, we're not throwing good money at bad in, a, you know, something that just has a lot of problems. Um, this is kind of you bring in a, bringing a structure like this along in its life so that it can continue to be useful downtown. And um, I know this is a time that the world is changing and, you know, you see people working from home, and, um, but in this particular environment, they, they seem to like to be, uh, do we lose a connection? Do we have me? I think we're still here. We yeah. can hear you. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, I still find people like uh, like to work in there, um, get their teams together, and uh, take on these smaller spaces and the market. As I hear you, the different guys talking about it. It's one thing if you're moving into one of the newer buildings and everybody has to structure those packages to cash flow. These older buildings, we can still do the rent level that. Um, I don't know, a, a, a growing, you know, Helena enterprise can afford to, um, to pay. So it's kind of the affordable commercial space, I guess I, I see it as. Um, and it doesn't obviously have all the bells and whistles of a new property, but you know, this is a project to bring it along. Um, leading into this project before this, uh, around $150,000 that I've reworked on that property. Um, this property, I think, is assessed around $725,000 when that kind of permit goes through and the, and the revenue department comes back out. They'll surely take it up $300,000, $350,000 up towards a million dollars for that property. So We'll pay some more taxes, but that's great. I I get the program, and um, you know, um, if anyone has any questions, um, I'm here to answer them. Thank you very much for that presentation. Thanks for your application as well. Um, any questions from the board, or statements, or comments? Or I do have one clarifying question. This is Chris Holmes. On page five of the application, up at the very top, it states at least one hire by a tenant has been able to remain at the office due to the elevator being provided. So that makes it sound like the elevator has been installed and that allowed this one hire by a tenant to stay there. Mm, it's um, could you clarify that for us? It's more the the promise of the elevator to the tenant has allowed this um, employee to remain in Helena um, and still work for this tenant. And then when the elevator is completed, they'll be able to work in the office with their team. So just a little phrasing. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions regarding uh, uh, this application? I would say, given, go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. I was going to say, given the resources we have available, is 
is this a project that could be postponed for a while? Um, I don't know how your deliberations will go on. I, I've seen the budget there and you've got some commitments uh, for some past projects. Um, hopefully you're able to do something for all of the applicants today. Um, obviously my project is the bigger one at the table. Um, I'm, I'm doing a 50% match understanding that, um, you know, you want to leverage dollars and, and go as far as you can with these kind of ADA improvements. Um, you could, if there was a step to it, you know, I, you know, I, I need to get started. I want to get started on it. Um, we've got some final plans and engineering and permitting that will take some time. But, um, you know, kind of, I don't know where the costs are going to go on that, on that, sir. I'd like to be there with the, with the estimates that I have from the suppliers um, working on it. It, it. it will take, you know, three months of picking around in there with a pretty small crew so you're not interrupting people and um, building that hoist way. Um, you know, we won't have 10 trucks down there and 20 guys in the building. We'll be working with smaller crews at different timing. So it could kind of be stretched out, but um, if you were to delay to the next cycle, um, that's kind of stretching it out further than, than I would hope. Um, I'm also dealing with, um, you know, the banks and um, what you, what kind of work you do with them. And if you're watching um, what's going on in the economy, we're, we're all going to be looking at our interest rates moving. And um, so I think time is the essence for me, but I could see kind of a step of, Hey, we've got this now um, get going. Um, we're going to go this far with you, but you're not going to get, I, I could see being a part of the project commitment category um, for a part of it, you know, um, to finish, to finish up because those final bills and everything would be coming in um, after your next meeting. Did that kind of, I, I wouldn't want a full delay unless that's your deliberation and um, I would like to get started. And um, um, the core of it is getting the elevator in and, and the bathrooms and um, the ramps that are needed to get there. And uh, so that's kind of, you know, um, the scenario um, as you think about stretching your, your funds out, I guess, from this TIF, from a TIF standpoint, what money you have to work with. I got a question real quick on the location of the entrance from the first floor. Where would that be located at? There's a floor plan, the next floor mm -hmm. plan. So the center entrance is the main entrance uh, gotcha. okay. via the platform to the second floor stair. And right off of that second floor stair is will be the elevator access. Um, and the plan is to provide a stop in the basement, a stop on the restaurant level, which is about 18 inches lower than that stair entrance, and then a second floor access with the elevator. So it's uh, three stops. And who are the tenants on the second floor at the moment? Uh, the Montana Free Press is a, uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, what based uh, new service, um, Old Salt Co-op um, has uh, established their businesses office, business offices up there. And um, I have a third space of about 800 feet that um, um, I would be working on getting rented. Okay. So there is uh, one, two, three, four, uh, some about 12 to 15 people um, working on the second floor. 
Okay. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> kind of to meet the future working people. Um, yeah. an interesting point. Uh, I uh, work with Montana Internet. I have a one gig radio um, direct off the fiber line um, and have redone the wiring in that building to cat six all throughout it. So these firms that um, need to jump up to the higher capacity and higher speeds, um, you know, we're just trying to move the whole place along in those. Any board members have any questions, thoughts on this? Or... Okay. Well, thank you for the for the application and your presentation. Um, appreciate it a lot. Uh, and so that's it for the three applications for today. Um, the, or we only have three applications for today. Um, let's. Uh, as a board, let's, is what uh, Lee suggested, let's, deli let's deliberate. Let's uh, go back to the Cruise Avenue Triangle uh, Park application. Can uh, I talk on this real quick, Andy? Nathan, I, go ahead, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I was there and I, I got a notice from the school that I have to pick up a kid and I can't reach my wife, but I fear I make the quorum. Um, <laughs> It's <laughs> family first, man. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I probably just have to go get one of those tests or something for them. But, um, okay. anyhow, um, so like I said, I, by my math, I think I make the quorum. So I, I think yeah. we should have a discussion, but we might have to reconvene to vote. I don't know. I'll let Ellie check my math on that, but I, Nathan, you're 100% correct. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I'm getting I'm getting crickets when I'm seeing if my wife can grab him. So I <laughs> it happens. It's happened. That's this day and age, isn't it? So that's okay. Oh, um, so for my clarification, how many board members do we have currently without vacancies? Thirteen. And we have a quorum of seven right now. Yeah, but I thought we had three vacancies. No, there's only one vacancy right now. Is no, my we, we have more than one vacancy. We do. So April, yes. how many how many serving mem how many serving members do we have presently? Given that's the case. I apologize. If we I'm have right. eleven. So we have two vacancies. Okay. So Nathan, if you need to leave, you'll be fine. You'll maintain. Okay. Sorry, Sorry. y'all, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Only okay. All right. Thanks, Nathan. Um, thanks for the quick math and the quick work. Uh, team, thank you. Um, all right, let's uh, uh, let's do some let's do some discussing. Um, let's let's focus on the Cruise Avenue. Oh well, first, again to reiterate, we've got on hand ninety six thousand four hundred seventy three dollars in the TIF fund um, cash on hand, and then the next allocation or tranche of funds won't be available until May or June. Um, and I know, yes, we'll have some funds trickling in from November, but uh, it's part of the reason why we have two meetings, uh, two application deadlines um, to meet up with those, uh, I guess, resources that will come in at those times. And so, um, again, $96,473 of cash on hand. Um, let's talk about the Cruise Avenue Triangle Park application. Um, uh, for the zero scaping um, out in front of the independent building uh, there on Cruz Avenue and, and Broadway, or Sixth, excuse me. Um, it's owned by the city, uh, but they will take uh, maintenance of this and they're looking to develop this piece of property along with uh, in preparation of housing that may be there um, that would start next or this coming fall. Um, what are our thoughts on this? The uh, floor is open. Um, 
they're requesting thirty-three thousand uh, dollars for this. It says that uh, architectural design four thousand, landscaping four thousand, um, altogether thirty-three thousand dollars. Andy, uh, just, oh, go ahead, Charlie. Go ahead, your first, uh, Lee. Well, I was just going to say, from my standpoint, I think this is a worthy project. It's going to add visually, uh, it will have a visual impact on the district. Um, it is immediately adjacent to the direct downtown. And I think there's going to be a fair amount of traffic going up to the independent building. Um, so I am a proponent of this proposal. This is Charlie Carson. I'm a proponent for this proposal. Um, there are some, you know, obviously we've got to trim budgets. The design fee and landscape fee um i think those are, are something should be uh, looked at a little bit um and uh being that they are a you know that's what they do that's what mosaic does um so um maybe that could be trimmed out and that could be their uh per se uh, uh match um, I know that they're, they, as Ben said, they are under, they under, uh, budgeted it, I uh, supposedly, you know, 270,000, they, they've got into it already, but, um, that's real numbers there, but you know, we, what we have, we're limited with what we have. So we, everybody's going to have to, you know, if we're going to dole out some money today, everybody's going to have to, you know, uh, get something skimmed off. Um, so um, I propose that, you know, we pay for the hardscape. So I, I would just want to interject really quickly and ask a question of the applicants. Can you tell me when, you might've mentioned this earlier, but I don't have a note on it. When are you actually planning to install the pervious um, trail and the actual landscaping, the xeriscaping with garden works? When would that go in the ground? I will go in this spring. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I agree too. This is Chris. If um, if this is going to happen this spring, and we're looking at a way to stretch our limited resources over three really strong projects, if we can at least give this project the twenty five thousand um, for the of the cost to landscape this beautiful project, I would be in support of that. This is Jennifer. <clears throat> I am curious if we do the $25,000, if it can still move forward in the spring. Um, yeah, I believe our intention would be to, would be just still move forward. I mean, it just might be a matter of um, extent um, so kind of working with garden works and doing the final pricing, there may be some variation in the, how much landscaping we can kind of work into it, but, um, we'll certainly, we'll still be moving forward and finishing it this spring. You know, it's a beautification effort. So it's kind of, you know, uh, how intensively do we, are, are we able to, uh, landscape that zone with the funding that we have? So not, that would kind of be the variable, but it will happen. It's beautification, but it's also partly ADA accessibility. Is that correct? Yeah, the much of the investment we've already made in some of the uh, kind of forthcoming hardscape is is ADA access. Yeah, and kind of public improvement along the uh, sidewalk there. So it is a mix of a combination of those things. In that landscape design, just for clarification, is 
going to be done by garden works the local business here yes mm -hmm. okay thanks jeff yep so yeah we have to we'll, we'll have to pay. we don't do landscape design we'll have to pay for that um okay. part of it the architectural design obviously we would do but the landscape design we would not okay. be doing I feel like what we're trying to puzzle out now is what is going to be a meaningful amount to get each of these projects started. I um, haven't heard, I haven't heard any objection to either one of these projects. So I'm assuming that we are just trying to figure out how to spread our 96, 473 out among these three projects with amounts that are meaningful enough that something can get going. So we're not hampering um, either project completely. So I feel like I wanna affirm, I feel like we just did get affirmation that $25,000 would at least be a meaningful amount of support to make sure this project got started. I'd kind of like to find out what would be a, a meaningful amount for the union market project if we can't fund the full 41320? Um, well, um, I did um, I did get quotes, but they're they're a year, they're uh, six months old. Mm -hmm. um, and I did, consider considerable work uh by the owners my wife and myself <laughs> um and there's there is going to be more work to do i think i think i i came at this as low i came at this on the low end um hoping to hoping to be funded and to to make up the costs uh you know that that would go through it. I think uh, I kind of feel like the 41, 320 uh, um, is a, is a pretty good, uh, a pretty good number to, you know, we're still going to have to engineer the vault and we're going to have to deal with a sewer line and a, um, also a, uh, you know, an engineering solution to our sidewalk. Um, so Seth. I am hoping. Seth, this is Charlie Carson. So looking at your application, you, you kind of have like two projects there. Yeah. Yes. And with those two projects, which one is more important? Well, um, the water line is, is uh, probably the most important. Um, it, it is a, it's an issue that, that really is, uh, you know, in, in case of a failure, it's going to be, a, it, it could be problem. catastrophic. <laughs> yeah, catastrophic uh, destruction. Of, yeah. Uh, so um, that and the replacement, your number on that is 28,340. Yeah. And that's six months ago. Yeah. Okay. And Seth, I, sorry, Charlie. Uh, that's okay. And I'm sorry. And it was, well, obviously there's plenty of your um, engineering um, for uh, a match, I suppose. You didn't throw any of that in there. Seth, the question that I asked before for the um, Cruise Triangle Park project, I want to ask of you as well. When would you actually be looking to try and get any of this work done? And would you be willing to do it in phases, i.e. Um, based on what Charlie just asked you? 
could you conceivably get started on the waterline first and then try to maybe submit a subsequent application to deal with further work at a later date in July, say? Yes, yes, we could do that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Do you know if you, when you would be trying to get the waterline addressed or would you wanna wait? I mean, would you, would you prefer even just to park the whole project until July? I don't know when you'd be planning to try and get any of this work done. If you've got contractors oh. lined up, I know that you said these estimates are a little stale. They, they are, but uh, you know, um, the, if we're funded, um, we would want to get moving right away. Um, once the, uh, you know, the frost is out of the ground and, uh, and we, we could do the work. Um, there's, a. Uh, it's difficult to get contractors, uh, scheduled right now. Um, I'm in the contracting business and it's, it's extremely hard, but I, I would hope that, that if we're funded, we, we would hit the ground running and, and get, get this work lined up right away. Uh, and as soon as the weather allowed, we would get started. Andy, I got a question. Um, yeah, go ahead, Chair. Jeff, have you been in contact with the Public Works or Transportation Services program with regard to our sidewalk repair program and our water and sewer line repair programs? Um, you know, I have uh, I have talked to Adam. I've talked to uh, Tizer. I've, I've been up to the city engineering department um, as, you know, as recent as last week. Um, so I have talked to those guys. I haven't, you know, I've got other issues with that building um, that I can address with a loan. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm more looking for help here on this one. Okay. Well, yeah, and that would also include the 88 corner of where, what is um, uh, the With corner um, yeah, at the location too. And the city pays for that in the 88 corners for sidewalks. So it, I, I just thought I'd bring it to mind because other people may be also wondering too, Seth, so. Well, the... Um, there's a bigger discussion on that. You know, there was a little bit of work done with the fire hydrant um, on, on the corner uh, two years ago. This is Charlie Carson. And um, I don't know. Uh, so this program, the city will replace um, the sidewalks and pay for it. And then your, you will pay for it over term i don't know how many years it is through your taxes but at a zero interest right yeah i just had a bunch of sidewalks on rodney street redone that way so i love the the zero interest form yeah So with that, in this, was there um, a breakdown of uh, sidewalk cost? Um, I had figured the sidewalk, um, let's have a look here. Uh, not including the, the vault, I believe. Um, well, there's uh, there's the curb and gutter. Yeah, it's it's probably about six thousand dollars. Yeah. 
So just for everybody's edification as they're trying to work through the numbers in their head, um, hypothetically, as per the discussions that have taken place so far, if there was 25 grand dedicated toward the park, and you also considered covering the costs of the water um, main improvements for the Union Market building, just that alone at this present time, um, that would leave 43,133 from the original 96,473 or sorry, 96, 473 that currently sits in our account. With the re I don't have a calculator, Ellie. With the remaining balance after the the ninety six <laughs> minus the forty three is forty what seven. -ish. So if um if if twenty five grand were put toward the um, Triangle Park on cruise, and then twenty eight three four zero for the um, cost of the water improvements for the Union Market building. Um, that would leave a total of 43,133. Okay. Um, board members, should we always leave a little bit in the kitty? I know in the past that we got it down to within dollars, I think, of the last time. But then when the actual numbers came out, I think we we had a little bit more left in the pot, um, but yeah, to be um, cautious with these funds, I think is is prudent. Um, I know that also too, that we've got another round of, of revenue um, probably available in May slash June uh, when we'll accept other applications or possibly revisit some of these current applications. Um, you know, to get some of them off the ground and started, I think is, is a good idea. It sounds like there can, um, at least one of them, we can wait on the full amount. Um, some we can start on half of the project. I know that Seth had, has two projects here, it looks like, and we're looking at the one he thinks is the most urgent is replacement of the potable water line, including backflow prevention and sidewalk replacement. There might be some funds that the city has that he could dive into as well on that project to help cost share. Um, yeah, I, I'm open to entertaining ideas. I'm, I'm glad we're having this discussion. There's some good questions. And so happy to continue if you'd like. Another consideration to throw out, and this applies yeah. uniformly to all of the TIF districts that we have, 10% of the funds need to be um, reserved for purposes of affordable housing. And that's part of the housing trust fund that the city has. And I don't, I think that that is more something that applies to the full tax year. I don't know that, 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 and Sharon can qualify, maybe she would have a better sense, but I think that some of the funds that would be available come late spring, early summer could help support that. I don't know that that means that you have to leave 10% in the kitty right now. Just throwing that out there. Um, so it's not 10% of the 96,000. It would be 10% of the whole year, you know, say it's $160,000. I'm making an assumption, but I believe okay. that that would be the case. So, you know, okay. I think in total, you, that would mean you need to keep on reserving you know, just shy of 20, but we'll have to wait and see. Again, the numbers are in flux and we're basing it off of the best projections that our finance team have, but just wanted to provide that. Sharon, I think maybe has more context. Yeah, um, what the housing trust fund resolution says, you do not, will not be transferring money into the housing trust fund. Well, what it, what the resolution said that 10%, up to 10% of the funds have to be used for a housing related project is um, how that goes. Because legally you can't tra transfer TIF money into the housing trust fund. The city can't do that. That's state state law. So, so if, for example, um, and this is just a hypothetical, and I don't think it really marries with what they're trying to achieve with the apartment building in the vicinity of the independent, 
Um, but if some of those were, you know, dedicated, affordable, deep restricted at say 80% of the area median income. Uh, we, haven't, we, we haven't established the guidelines for the housing right. trust fund yet. So the There's commission still, just uh, said, the commission just said, housing has to be used for affordable housing and there's no definition attached yeah. to it yet. Yep. So that's gonna be worked out hopefully in coming months when that board's established up and running. So just letting, wanted to make sure you all were aware of that. Again, it applies to all of our TIF districts, not just the downtown, but also the railroad and the Capitol Home Mall, so. One of those things, Charlie, to kind of your take, I mean, from the world that I work in, there are kind of a couple of different ways to go after TIF districts. And sometimes you want to, to retain your money and kind of build it so you can get a big project off the ground. There are other times you want to get the money out on the, on the streets so that you're starting to build the increment. Um, again, if you... If you can get more people doing more projects, it starts to create more increment, which then allows us to be able to get bigger projects. In my mind, and again, this is just mine, I almost feel like I kind of want to just spend it all here for a couple of years to create the, uh, the, the essence that as a board, we're trying to make downtown move so we can get, while the iron's hot, that we can get momentum going. But again, that's just where my mind sits on this. So I'm not against, I mean, I mean, prioritizing and spending every penny that we can in my mind. I agree with you, Brian, on that 100%. Um, I think, you know, this, this money needs to be spent and our downtown uh, needs it. Um, we really need to spend this money for these improvements to help out you know, uh, the Cruise Avenue, the, 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 the Union Market and the Penwell. These are three good projects, but we are limited in funds. And, you know, where to kind of send them uh, and, or how to proportion out our funds to, to these three projects is, you know, the hardest part. You know, where can we trim and who, you know, what's going to be the, you know, the, the best way to go. And it's, you know, it, it, it's hard for, for, for the board to do. So with that, um, you know, I, I don't, with, with, you know, the sidewalk replacement and, and, um, and curb and gutter, um, that's rough 6,000, Seth. Um, is that something that you'd be willing to, you know, uh, uh, talk to the city engineer, it's Mark Young, I believe uh, to see if you could, uh, you know, pay through that through uh, 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 the taxes or, or something like that. Well, um, you know, I'm I'm open to anything, but uh, I'm I'm hesitant to take on, you know, more debt just because I have a, you know, the I have a hundred thousand dollar roof. I've got, you know, these old buildings are are. Uh, they're rough. It's a rough go. And I think the Pinwell people can agree with me on that. <laughs> I can agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> what about, I mean, we're in a position where we can fund two projects, the first two, um, the, at full ask. The third project, can we defer that to the next to the July funding and give assurance of priority to the proposal if it works time-wise or vice versa, do full funding on the first project, do partial funding on the third project and ask Seth to defer to uh, July for full funding. I mean, we're trying to accommodate everybody with their ask. So it'd be full funding on the first. On this one, we do the 28, and then the third one, do a partial there, or would it be the full 51 on the second one? Well, I'm, uh, you know, we can do 33 on the first and 51 on the second, and we still have $12,000, I think it is, left in the kitty. 
but that that then leaves the Penwell building and you know me I am a proponent of rehabilitation of historic buildings so that doesn't sit well with me but we've only got limited dollars and I'm trying going along with what Brian said is trying to get as much money out there as we can um yeah and you so know I'm, oh i'm sorry ahead. yeah um, go ahead chris i'm confused on page six of the uh packet it looked to me like the union market project was asking for 41 320 and that the total project was 51 320. oh I yeah see. That's... okay i'm reading it wrong my, my mistake yeah. thank you that that is true we were gonna uh that was uh that was our investment. Oh, yes, I see. So fully funding that project would be 41320. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Which then we could do, what are we at? We're at 77,000. We'd have $20,000 left mm. to do with as we see fit. I'm not sure that would help the Penwell building. You know, it might get the project started, okay. but that maybe might be... suggest to them that they come back at the next yeah. iteration and try to do full funding there. Sure. And uh, now, Mr. Mueller, is it's Mueller, correct, Joe? Either or some... in our family. Okay. Some pronounce <laughs> yeah. it Mueller, some pronounce it Mueller. Mueller. And, uh... Yeah. I... <laughs> Just, yeah. It, it, well, thank you very much. Um, what... It, you know, as you're hearing these deliberations, you know, trying to be careful with these funds, but also too want to make sure that, you know, like we've all said, they're great. They're three really good projects. And you'd mentioned you need to get some engineering done in the meantime is, you know, what is a good amount that would help you get the project started? I'm not sure I'm understanding if the, if you're saying that, you know, here's something to get started, kind of a fees. I've kind of gone through that um, level of, a feasibility now this is the the working drawings and everything that you know is related to that um i'm surprised where you know you're trying to stretch dollars i haven't heard anybody talk about the 50 percent match that i have there um you're 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 stretching those dollars quite a ways um at that point i don't even with trimming on the first project and the second project I don't think anybody's coming close to oh, 20 percent. If you want to look at those dollars, um, as I look at uh, what we need to do there, um, there are some things, um, you know, where I guess I would just say I would take that on from cash resources and you know trim deal with some of the ADA bathrooms and, and, and deal with less work on the front of the building. Um, you've got to pay the, the professionals to get the work done to, to where, you know, the project would be around 200,000 and um, it would still be a $235,000 project. So I would be at 135,000. Um, there's no contingency in there. So I expect to spend more. Um, but at that commitment level of, of leverage and I, you know, in the way you analyze it in the paperwork here, I'd be at 57% um, contribution to the project. Um, I'm ready to go. Um, we've spent a lot of time on the project. Um, if it became a hundred thousand and there was 50 in, an, in this round and, and there was 50 as you've allocated to other projects, project commitments that came in the next collection, um, you know, that would seem like something that would be fair to me as I look at the three applications that are in front of you. Um, I just wanted to note that Mr. Muller brings up a really good point about match um, because one of the things that, you know, needs to be presented by applicants and, and considered by you is the relationship between public and private investment. And that's why the match component can be so important. Um, but also, I just wanted to um, add on to Lee's comments about 
funding in the next cycle in July. I, I can't say with any certainty, we don't know now that we'd have enough money even in the month of July from the taxes that are due in in the month of May to cover all of these projects in their entirety. So there are some considerations that do have to be made amongst you as to how you want to address these applications and prioritize them and partially or fully fund them. So, sorry, I feel like a Debbie Downer today and that's not where I like to be. But I just wanted to put that out there for perspective's sake. Uh, thanks, Ellie. I, I, uh, you're not a Debbie Downer by any means. <laughs> um, Leah, um, your, your idea is good, um, but I, I, I think um, all these um, are important and we should just, I think, divvy up our money kind of amongst them as priority of, of, of getting it done. Um, that's just my opinion. I think also question. the um, question about match is a good part of the discussion. My understanding is that we don't have a hard and fast match requirement or a definition of what that match can and can't be because every situation is so different. And, you know, you could, you could, take the amount of investment that these property owners are putting into their properties and you could figure match in a hundred different ways, I think. And um, it might be an issue of discussion that we as a board take on in a different, uh, at a different time about what constitutes match and, and trying to come up with a cohesive guidance for applicants to figure out what what qualifies as match? So it's, uh, just to um, build on that, Chris, um, the precedence that has been established, and this has come up um, as our uh, city attorney's office have worked on drafting resolutions for each of these projects, is that you're considering the cost for the scope of the component of whatever work is being submitted to you. So for example, um, when it came to the Dowling Architects building, obviously, um, Mike invested quite a bit of money into that facade improvement and all the interior renovations and everything but we were, they were only focusing the resolution on the discrete costs for all of those sidewalk parklet amenities, not the totality of the renovation efforts for that property. Does that make sense to everybody? I guess, I'm not sure, Elias or Jeff, I'm not sure that would apply to our uh, Cruz project because we're investing money into city property. Um, <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, yeah I appreciate that. 100% revenue, we're donating money to the city and just basically asking for any kind of donation back. So there, I, I don't know how that would be considered necessarily because it's not our property to begin with. It's 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 a donation back to the city. And I, I don't know how you would consider a match in that situation. It's just very different. No, I hear you. I think that with, the, with, with your project, um, Jeff, that based on what we've heard, so that the... the hardscaping I think is is a component of what you're trying to achieve in total so my my takeaway from what was presented by you Ben um, was that it was roughly a 300 grand project in total not the 33 uh, yeah. because it's all part of one um, developable developable public amenity space um, but that was that's just my interpretation of it in that instance. And I think that with the way that that encroachment agreement reads, um, and I myself am not an attorney, so again, I would have to defer, but it, it reads to me as though while it is owned by the city that you guys basically are responsible for the um, uh, use and maintenance of it in accordance with that encroachment agreement. So while it remains ours, it's you guys take on the onus of responsibility for it until such a time yeah. as there's a change in that agreement. Um, well, uh, for the easement agreement, as long as they have that easement, they're going to have to maintain it. Yep. But the one thing I want want to make sure you all go back to every time you have this discussion is to look at the downtown plan and the goals of the plan. And I don't know if that helps in the deliberation, but that's one of the things. 
So I think when Ellie talked about the city attorney looking at that, what he looks at is what the plan talked about and what are eligible costs under state law. So um, I think that's one of the things he has looks at. So I don't know that that helps you, but I think um, it's just good practice. Every time you have the discussion about what project you're doing is for you as a board to speak to what goals and of the plan does this project help address? So, and I'm and sure in, staff can help with that. Yep, and in, in addition to what Sharon's saying, you, you always wanna keep in the forefront of your mind how, this act, how each project serves the public benefit, right? Um, because these projects, whether it's in Helena, you know, Butte, Missoula, they come under intense scrutiny every legislative session. So with respect to that, as you know, looking at that public private investment ratio is I think a really important factor to consider. Um, so you don't wanna, you know, cite the ire of the legislature by any means for what we're doing or seeing that we're being arbitrary in any way, but. I fear we've stunned you all into silence, I'm sorry. So that brings us back to the union market dollars. Mm -hmm. can, can we see the, the page for the union market? Um, So with, with, with that, let's, you know, I propose uh, the, the 28,340 um, for, for now. And that's going to leave um, what for um, the Penwell? So I think that yeah, depends on, oh, sorry, Jen. Nope, sorry. This is Jennifer DeHero. I propose that we also do that $2,800 or $28,000. And then also the, um, sorry, for the Cruz Avenue, the, um, ah, sorry, I lost it. The $25,000. And then that will leave money for the Penwell. That, uh, that would leave just over 43000 for the Penwell. Let's, uh, we'll do, we'll do, thank you, Jennifer. We'll do one at a time if we can. Um, we've got, uh, Charlie had made a, a motion, um, for the 28,340 for the, uh, 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 for the union building on sixth, um, hopping out of place on these projects, but, um, I, I, I'm, I'm not making motions. I'm just kind of uh, throwing, you know, uh, figures okay. out there My so mistake. we can figure out what's, what's okay. left. Well, okay. Let's go to the Penwell um, and and let's, discuss that a little yep. bit. That sounds good. Uh, that sounds good to me. Let's jump to the Penwell building elevator request. Uh, it's rather large, as you can see. Um, you know, the, there's the top. But part he's, of the uh, he's asking for, there it is. 117.5. Yeah, Jim. And we have 43 of that. And uh, and then we should leave a little few dollars in the kitty or or that's up to debate, I guess, or mm -hmm. the, uh, we need to have money going in. We need to discuss that as a board sure. definitely um, in our next meeting. Just for reference sake, if you look at page nine of the Cruz Avenue proposal, there is the listing of what funds can be used for by statute. So just for reference sake.
Oops. Mm -hmm. Almost there. Boom. There we go. So Lee, question for you. Are you saying the ADA restroom upgrades would be the only thing that would be, uh, the TIF funds would be able to cover for the Penwell? Well, no, I'm not saying that necessarily. All I'm saying is, is that this attachment A lists the items. Uh, I'm not evaluating any of the projects with regard to these 12 items, um, I would think, um, well, it doesn't eliminate pollution. I don't know, it, that maybe the ultimate result is, is that only the ADA bathrooms, yeah. Um, but aren't the um, entrances, the, the platforms in, and the entrances on the sidewalk also for ADA purposes? Yes, that I would think so. Um, so with that in mind, the $43,000 could help with those two things. Um, yeah. In relation to those ADA items, um, that that attachment a list um also d directs you to um urban renewal right hours, which is an entire another list of eligible activities um not saying that funding just funding the ada isn't a reasonable um way to go for this round but there's also a lot more allowable activities. Um, and that's what we researched for this project and why we included everything in this submittal just for everyone to see. Why, why the board is thinking about this. Ryan, um, would any of these projects benefit from some of the grant or loan funds the city is giving you under ARPA? Potentially a little bit. Uh, it, it's a little harder to do that. Now, our problem is, is I think we already have a good portion of it already delved out. At this okay. point, we're going to have a press release any day now. So I'm trying to think if there's any other opportunities here. I think another option, and, and, and Seth, by no means am I trying to pick on you because I know that you've talked to me on numerous occasions over the past year, um, but I, another way that you can approach things and uh, for the time being would be to ask to have Seth exhaust all those options for the different infrastructure improvement programs with the city and come back to us with a revised application in the summer. Obviously, we know that's not ideal because there's a very real and present concern over the water line or you can consider just addressing the water line now. I mean, I don't know how likely, Seth, you expect it to fail based on your you know, consultation. I know your wife's a professional engineer, but between her understanding of matters and, and discussions with staff and public works at the city, what, what, 
the longevity of what you have right now? I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, I, I think the water line is something that needs to be addressed. You, you, you just don't know how long uh, something like that is gonna, gonna continue to function. Um, and I've talked with, uh, you know, professional uh, plumbers and, you know, I'm, I'm in the business, I know uh, uh, contractors. Um, but, uh, you know, we are, we are also in the, in the city's property where that water line goes. And we're trying to, I think, uh, you know, any, any debt that we don't incur uh, goes back into the building. And that's, that's kind of the way we functioned for the last, uh, you know, since um, 2006. Um, we can wait on the, uh, we can wait on the roof drain. Um, I figured out the cost to, uh, to treat that water is costing the city two to $300 a year. Um, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, I don't know how many buildings have that same situation downtown. It may be many, I, I don't know, but it's not a modern code would not let you do that. If I can interject, um, I think the water is a health and safety with the lead. If he has two restaurants in there. I think that's super important because children do eat there. And um, I think that's something that, you know, we should take care of. So this is a hard, slow conversation. Nobody wants to make that motion, do we, Charlie? Yeah. Um, it seems that way right now, and yeah. I don't know if we're ready for the motions, but um, my time's getting limited. No. I have doctor's yeah. appointments. Um, so, um, I, you know, I think uh, the numbers are what they are, and, you know, if um, – I guess we, uh, a direct question to all of the applicants, you know, is, you know, can you live with it or work with it? Or that's, you know, cause that's kind of how it breaks down with the, with the funds that we have. Um, you know, as Andy says, we have to be good stewards of this money, but um, we got to get it out. And, 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 you know, these are three good applicants. And I think that, um, that we need to spend this money and get them out, you know, what we do have to these, to these three. And are these good investments, you know, for the, the citizens tax dollars and the businesses that had funded this? It's, uh, um, you know, kind of the board of investments for the city of Helena, and we're advising the city. Um, who knows what they'll they'll do with the? If they say yay or nay on the total amount that we recommend to the city. Um, but uh, yeah, I think you know, there's for the total amount that is being requested from all three. There's you know, we we can't cover all of that, unfortunately. Um, you know, being good stewards, but also to be good, being good investors. Uh, we saw on page nine that we pointed out the things that we are, uh, the projects that are eligible for these funds, um, infrastructure improvements, um, et cetera. Uh, so we've got three, three good projects ahead of us. We've got limited time. Um, uh, I'm open to motions for each one of these projects or even considering to, you know, look at this uh, in, at a future date. Um, but I want to be respective of everybody's time. I know we've been on this call for two hours now. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm open to discussion. Brian, what are your thoughts, sir? I'm, I'm going to make a motion just because I kind of don't want to push this off. That's the okay. one thing. Time is money for everybody. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we 
that we applied $33,000 to the first one, which is the Cruise Avenue, $28,000 for phase one for Seth. And then basically, I think it's $35,000 to try to do as much of the ADA bathrooms and entry, the windows, bathrooms and entry for, for Joe with the idea that we would like to have Seth. I mean, I think this board would be very willing to come back and readdress once we have additional funds for both Seth and Joe to continue yeah. with this. Um, but 33, 28, and I think 35 should get us close and leave us a thousand bucks left ish. Am I even close, Ellie? Let me pull up a calculator. Hang on one second. I don't think you're terribly far off, Brian. You're close. You're really close. I'm into horseshoes today. Uh -huh. Thirty-three, twenty-eight, and thirty-five comes to ninety-six thousand dollars. That would leave us four hundred seventy-three dollars in the kitty. Shoot, it's oh, it's good. <laughs> yep. And and you know, as long as we are encouraging the applicants to stay in touch and and return, so that our message is supportive of these projects because all three of them are such strong, important projects to downtown and. Um, I, I would, did you make a motion, Brian? Cause I would, yes. second. I would second it. So uh, really quickly, just so I understand, Brian, had you said you had said 33 for the cruise triangle park? Yep. I did. 28340 for the water on the union market project. Right. So that was the estimate that we were yep. working off of. And then the, the full remainder would go to Joe or am I wrong in understanding that? Honestly, I, for me, I I'm, I'm would be comfortable there. And, and okay. just we put those three out there. And, and again, to apologize to Joe, but as with the increment, as we build increment over time, being able to create the avenue to put elevators in these old buildings is going to be crucially important. We just don't have the money yet. Um, and and I, it, it pains me to not want to to do that type of improvements, but they're always expensive. Yep. So that would leave 35,133 for the Penwell building by my math. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with, you know, with Brian, you know, we got to get this money on the street to help build the, have that investment to attract more investment to build the increment. So then we can uh, 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 advise the city to fund more of these projects using the TIF dollars. And uh, um, a lot, these all fit kind of the things that we would like to do. And these are the three, only three applications for here in January. And I'm sure we'll get more later on. Um, but yeah, that's, I'm glad we're having this discussion. So we've got a motion from Brian. We've got a second from Chris, uh, let the record show. Um, do we have a discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, those in favor say aye, or do we take a vote, or do we, do we want to do, how do we want to do this, Ellie, to record it? Um, uh, it's probably best just to have, vo voice vote, or? It's probably best to have, just like in a commission meeting, just have April as our admin, our lovely admin, um, call off each of your names individually. To get okay, it yeah, let's do that. We'll do roll call vote. Thank you, April. For the motion of giving uh, or advising the city commission to allocate thirty-three thousand for the uh, uh, for the Cruise Avenue, um, twenty-eight and change to the Sixth Avenue, or I'm sorry, the Union Building, and then the remainder with you know some left in the kitty for the elevator or for the bathrooms, the ADA project, the Penwell Building. Um, I'm doing it terribly, but. Um, Let's uh, go ahead, April. I'm not sure if April's available, so I'm just going to take the reins with that one. Yeah, have at it. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> so I'll just go off how the names are appearing yeah. on my screen. So Charlie? Aye. Okay, Chris? Aye. Uh, Lee? Aye. Okay, and Brian? 
Aye. And Jen? Aye. And back to you, Chair Shirtless. Yes, aye. Okay, so that was unanimous. There were six voting in support of the motion. So the recommendation will go forward to the city commission. Um, uh, just for the applicants, for their awareness, and I know um, uh, as far as the Penwell building is concerned, since uh, we've got staff from Mike's office on that you probably understand. This will take um, a number of weeks uh, to coordinate with the city attorney's office to get everything together to present to the city commission. So I would expect at this stage of the month where we are, um, we'll try to get everything in order so that it can go for the last meeting in the month of February, which is the 28th. Um, that's going to be what we will work toward um, and try to achieve that. Failing that, God forbid, for any reason, we will move it to the first meeting in March. Um, but from the time that uh, any resolutions may be passed um, by the commissioners, and do bear in mind, too, we have a new commission, two of which haven't dealt with TIF districts before, so this will be a new, new thing for them. Um, we'll be able to work on getting a development agreement with you essentially a contract um, to move things forward so that you can submit invoices for the work once they come in and you can get reimbursed down the line. Um, so that's procedurally how things will likely move forward. Um, and if you have any questions regarding any of that, you're welcome to reach out to me um, at any point in time. And I believe you all have my contact information. Certainly I know the Mosaic staff do. <laughs> um, and so and if I can uh, jump in on what you've said, from an experiential standpoint, having applied for and gotten a grant, it took almost exactly 90 days from the day the resolution was approved by the city commission to the time the money, the first of the money showed up. So for planning for these three projects, they should understand that. Great, thank you, Lee. That's a good point. That's a good thing to remember for applicants. All right, all right. So uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, now other business, any other business? Yes, other yes. business. Um, Go ahead, Charlie. We have a subcommittee meeting for, what, is it match donations that we're supposed to be figuring out? Uh, yeah. And that is when? Let me pull up my Outlook calendar, Charlie, thank you. Um, it is, do, 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 we're meeting next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Is this in person or is this on a Zoom? Oh, virtual. It's going to be Zoom. So the other thing is I would like to, on behalf of myself, thank this board for their wonderful service. January 26th is my last day with the city of Helena and it's been such fun and it's been a real pleasure and I'll be around town so um, I'll be keeping an eye on you guys but I want to thank each and every one of you for all your hard work and for all your dedication to this cause and I like Brian believe that this district is only going to grow in size and there will be broader opportunities so I wanted to thank you for that. April has to step away. So Ellie, um, you'll be responsible for closing out the meeting. Not a problem. Uh, first, I want to say thank you, Sharon. You yep. um, are an invaluable asset to the city of Helena and everybody that, you know, uh, that you've done. And I feel very sorry for the person who comes in and tries to fill your shoes because it's going to be a very difficult task. Here, here. Uh, yeah Thanks. thank you thank you sharon uh, it, yeah thank you sharon yeah i can't thank you enough well thank you for all the kind words um mm -hmm. you know as i we, we can't do this alone so you know, like a child um it, it takes a village or a community to do good work so i hope you all continue in your good work for the community because you all do amazing things well thanks for your advice you know over the last two years uh, working with us through this process, getting this uh, district set up and getting this board set up. And thanks for guiding us on this. And, um, you know, 
really appreciate your friendship and your your leadership on this. So thank you kindly. I, we appreciate you a lot, Sharon. Uh, wish you the best. And next time we see you, uh, you know, beverages on us. Uh, so hey, yeah. For me. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you, All right. Uh, public comment, uh, Mickey. Uh, anybody else? Seth, Michael, anybody else? No, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Seth. Um, please bring in uh, uh, another application for. Um, yes, please. Yes, um, mm -hmm. I wish we had more money for you, but yeah, uh, it goes for everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. only have what we have. Great, thank you. Yeah. Mrs. Joe, thank you uh, for the consideration. You can uh, see some of the challenges of uh, those kind of those kind of projects. And Sharon, a special thank you to you. And uh, I was kidding her the other day that we worked together back in the '90s on a comprehensive plan mm -hmm. in, uh, up there in the um, Chamber of Commerce building. So when she was with the county. Mm -hmm. uh, um, wow, you did great. <laughs> so appreciate appreciate all that you did. And look forward to seeing you around town and and all of you guys uh, in the meeting. I I see you here and there. So we'll get to work on it and see what uh, some other avenues and some of the stuff about the sidewalks or just what we can do or resubmit. But um, it's it's a project that I'm gonna uh, move move into. So I appreciate. Uh, your consideration and the difficulty of your decision that you have to make. Great. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next meeting. Uh, well, we've got the one next Wednesday on the 26th to talk about waivers and match and all that. Um, we've got a subcommittee meeting, but the next meeting will be Thursday, February 10th. Um, there will probably be, uh, I, I don't have the time, so sorry about that. Uh, do we know the time yet, Ellie or April? Well, same time, 10 a.m. on okay. Thursday the 10th. Okay. And Great. Presently, we have two items on the docket for discussion, so obviously we'll, we'll okay. review okay. whatever discussion we have as a subcommittee next week. Great. Um, and then on top of that, we want to get back to uh, firming up that, uh, the review of the project prioritizations and, and the, the work plan to finalize that for presentation to the city commission. Great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Ellie. All right. With that, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, board members. Thank you, guests. Thank you, applicants. And thank you, Helena Civic TV. And again, Sharon, thank you very much. Um, uh, you. Yeah. You're always welcome to join us. So, so all right. Well, Thanks, All everybody. Right. Have All a good right. day. Have, Have a good, good weekend. Day. You too. All right. Thanks so much.